This is the ISO wheel on your camera. And sometimes it does nothing. In this episode of Film Science, we deep dive into native, variant, and dual ISO, how it actually works, and the settings you should use for the cleanest video. So ISO is one of the first things you learn about when starting with video. And you probably know that if you crank it up, you'll make your camera more sensitive to light, making everything brighter, but with the downside that you'll add more noise. You probably also know that your camera has a native ISO or a dual native ISO, where it performs its best with the least amount of noise. You might even know that ISO has nothing to do with exposure. It's just the organization that sets global standards. But what you probably don't know is that all of this is one massive oversimplification. Because on some cameras, ISO has no impact on your final footage. Let's start with the basics. When you take video, light is coming through your lens and hitting the sensor, resulting in an image. But what if that image isn't bright enough? We can change our shutter speed or open the aperture to let more light in, but sometimes that still doesn't cut it. Our last option is to crank up the ISO, which is often explained as increasing the sensitivity of your sensor. But this isn't always true. Your sensor measures light as voltage and converts it to a digital value using an analog to digital converter. But if the image needs to be brighter, i.e. we need those values to be higher, the sensor can't increase the size of the photo sites to capture more light, but we do still need more signal. And depending on your camera, it can do this either digitally, changing the RGB numbers, electrically with a physical chip boosting the voltage, or a secret third way, and how that works appears to be a closely guarded secret. The wild thing is, from camera to camera, this results in some really different outcomes. So let's put it to the test. We've got a red Komodo that does ISO completely digitally, the Canon R5 that deals with it electrically, and a Blackmagic Pocket Cine that has dual native ISO. To test how each camera performs in low light, we're setting up a super dimly lit scene that looks correctly exposed at ISO 12800. We're cycling down through each ISO in camera and then bringing the footage back up to that initial brightness in post. This lets us see the amount of noise at each ISO we can see a pretty clear difference between the cameras. The Komodo has an equal amount of noise at every ISO. The Pocket Cine has two distinct bands of noise. And the R5 is similar, but with a whole lot more bands. So why is that? Well, when it comes to the method of ISO, these three cameras represent three families. First up is the ISO invariant family, like the red Komodo. You have one fixed ISO, and any changes made to the ISO number are just digital changes to the R, G, and B values. The camera just saves your raw footage and the ISO value you selected as metadata and then applies the change in post. And the ISO where there's no digital boosting is called the native ISO. The next family are the ISO variant cameras. It was the system that was used by a lot of DSLRs and we're pretty sure some mirrorless cameras like the R5 still work this way. The camera takes the voltage from the sensor and can boost it by different amounts through an amplifier, giving us our various ISO steps, with all the additional steps in between being filled by digital boosting. And if your camera's in this family, it means that you have one native ISO, multiple other analog boosted ISOs, and a bunch of digital steps in between. Our final secretive family are our dual native ISO cameras, like the Blackmagic Pocket Cine or the Sony A7S III. They're like the ISO invariant cameras, but instead have two analog circuits on the sensor. One that deals with higher light situations and one that deals with lower light situations, with all the other steps being done digitally. This results in two bands of ISOs and two native ISOs. Now, there's some solid disagreement between different websites and blogs about whether this is done with gain amplifiers increasing the voltage or having two capacitors on the sensor, literally allowing the sensor to be more sensitive. But because it's such a closely guarded secret, we can't be sure exactly how it works in every camera. Honestly, both methods might be true. But what we do know is what effect these three families have on the final footage. Which family your camera is in will impact how much noise there is across the range of ISOs. For an ISO invariant camera, the signal is being boosted digitally, meaning the amount of noise is equal across all ISOs, but with each step up of this digital ISO, we'll be able to see that noise more. Going up to a higher ISO never creates more noise, but we are bringing up the footage so we can see it. For a dual native ISO camera, you have two bands of noise, where between say 100 and 1000, the noise amount is the same, with the digital ISO making it more visible, and then at 1250, where the second native ISO comes in, you have a second band of noise. This will mean that ISO 1250 at the bottom of the second band will have less visible noise than ISO 1000 at the top of the first. And this is all because the signal is being processed or boosted by a more sensitive circuit. And finally, our variable ISO cameras have similar bands, just more of them. In the case of the R5 in our tests, it looks like every third stop is being boosted electrically, with all the other ones being done digitally. And then at about ISO 6400, it gives up and it's all digital. But why does noise even exist in low light environments? And what can we do about it? 
Every sensor has some noise because it's inevitable. Pretty much everything electronic creates some electromagnetic radiation. And it's this radiation interfering with our analog signal creating noise. Think of it as just a really quiet hum in the background called our noise floor. We don't notice it except when we try focus on really quiet sounds or we turn the volume up. In video, we notice it most in the dark parts of the image where all of the values are lower, so sitting closer to that noise floor. Now this is all fine when we're using our camera at its native ISO and not boosting the image too much either digitally or electrically because then the noise is minimal. But when we boost these values, making our small values bigger, we bring up those tiny noise values too. There isn't more noise, it's just making the noise more visible. So should we just shoot everything at the lowest ISO possible and bring it up in post? Not really. In general, on all cameras, you want to shoot as bright as possible without clipping, and then bring your exposure or gain down in post. This pushes your noise floor down, ensures that you have the best performance, and you'll often hear it called exposed to the right. This should be done through your lighting, and if you have to, your aperture and shutter speed, so that you can shoot at your camera's native ISO. But where this differs is when you have no option other than to change your ISO. You might be in an environment where you just don't have control of the lighting, or you're as open as is feasible. In this case, if you have an ISO variant camera or you're shooting compressed footage like H.264 log, you should increase your ISO in camera until your footage is correctly exposed. Shooting at your native ISO and then bringing your footage up in post will result in noisier footage. If you have a dual native ISO camera and you're shooting in RAW, you should shoot at whichever ISO gives you closest to the correct exposure. You're much better to move up to the second native ISO than shoot at the first native ISO underexposed. But remember that all the changes within the band can be made in post for the same effect. And if you have an ISO invariant camera shooting in RAW, changing your ISO in camera won't affect your raw footage. The number is purely being saved as metadata because the changes in camera are just a useful preview tool to see how your footage will look when it's digitally boosted. Okay, real quick note. We made this video because of a question from Scott W on our Log vs Raw episode. We went to reply and we actually weren't 100% sure about the answer. It ended up being a much more interesting rabbit hole than we could have expected. So thanks for that, Scott. If you've got a question you'd like us to answer, no matter how big or small, leave it in the comments below. We'll catch you later.